Now I'm talking. I'm gonna be talking about another approach for contrastive learning, which is exploring simple Siamese representation learning. Siamese networks have become a common structure in various recent models for unsupervised visual representation learning. These models maximize the similarity between two augmentations of one image, subject to certain conditions to for avoiding collapsing solutions. We report surprising empirical results that simple Siamese network can learn meaningful representations even using none of the following negative sample pairs, large batches, momentum encoders. Our experiments show that collapsing solutions do exist for the loss and structure, but its top gradient operation plays an essential role in preventing collapse. Although they are talking about this, but I read another paper that's saying that this paper still collapses if the model is 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 simple. Siamese networks are weight sharing neural networks applied for applied on two or more inputs. There are natural tools for comparing included but not limited to contrasting entities. Recent methods define the inputs as two augmentations of one image and maximize the similarity subject to different conditions. An undesired trivial solution to CMEs and networks is all outputs collapsing to a constant. There have been several general strategies for preventing CMEs and networks from collapsing. Contrastive learning, instantiated in SimCLR, repulses different images, the negative pairs, while attractive the same images to views. The negative pairs preclude constant outputs from the solution space. Clustering is another way of avoiding constant output, and I've explained this study AV methods, which incorporates online clustering into CMEs. And in my previous lecture, I introduced, I, uh, I introduced BYOL, which relies only on positive pairs, just like this paper, that it only cares about positive pairs but it does not collapse in a case in case a momentum encoder is used this architecture is called simsion although as i said there there is another paper that empirically shows that even this simsion collapses if the model is too simple so we need to add model complexity we report that simple CMEs and networks can work surprisingly well with none of the above strategies for preventing collapsing. The model directly maximizes the similarity of one's image to view using neither negative pairs nor a momentum encoder. It works with typical batch sizes and does not rely on large batch training. So first we load a mini batch X with N samples, and then we do augmentation. So we have two views. And then we do projection, which is N by D, and another projection, which is H, and then we, this is the loss. It tries to make it more symmetric, although the architecture is still uh, deliberately non-symmetric, deliberately. Because if it is non-symmetric, then you can prove theoretically that your model does not collapse. Also, SimSim still collapses if the model is too simple and empirical, there is empirical evidence for that. And then we use negative cosine similarity. So the architecture, this figure, this is the architecture so you see there is, everything is uh, symmetric except the predictor that makes it unsymmetric. And I've explained about stop gradient that we don't do, it means that we don't do back propagation, it's just the exponential moving average. And so 
that architecture takes as input two randomly augmented views x1 and x2 from image x so we have augmentation and we have two images x1 and x2 so we call it we call them views the two views are processed by the encoder network f consisting of a resnet for example and a projection multi-layer perceptor and head and the encoder shares weight between the two views a prediction multi-layer perceptron denotes as edge transforms the output of one view and matches it to the to the other view denoting the two input vectors as p1 and z2 we minimize their negative cosine similarity So we define a symmetrized loss as so we try to make this loss symmetric although you can you can only run this part and ignore the other one but uh, even byoo has both implementation both the symmetric and non-symmetric non version of the loss an important component for our method is to is a stop gradient we implement it by modifying this one as this. so this means that z2 is treated as a constant in this term similarly for for the, the other case and we use sgd for pre-training our method does not require a large batch optimizer and we use a learning rate of this with learning rate of 0.05 and the weight decay is this you see that the simpsium we can compare it with stop gradient and the model doesn't work if removing edge edge is the identity mapping and actually this observation can be expected if the symmetric loss is used now the loss is, is just symmetric its gradient has the same direction as the gradient of d and we know that this derivation on the gradient direction is valid only for symmetrized loss but we have observed that the asymmetric variant also fails if removing edge So I've explained BYOL in a different video. I think it was previous lecture. Today I've talked about SimSiam. As I said, there is another paper that shows that this one fails if the model is too simple. In another video, I explain SWAV. And everybody knows SimCLR, the classic version, one of the big, one of the first approaches. So even in SimCLR, we have gradient in both directions. But in BYOL, we don't have uh, back propagation for this part. And for the WA, it uses a uh, synchron knob approach. So our hypothesis is that SimSium is an, is an implementation of an expectation maximization line. So we consider loss function of very this f is just a network parameterized by theta and we draw samples from this tau which is the augmentation of an image x and the expectation is over the distribution of images and augmentations so here the problem is with respect to both theta and eta this formulation is analogous to k-means clustering the variable theta is analogous to clustering centers it is learn it is the learnable parameters of an encoder the variables eta sub x is analogous to the assignment vector of the sample x also analogous to k-means this problem can be solved by an alternating algorithm fixing just fixing one set of variables solving for the other set 
formally we can alternate between solving these two sub problems so one can use stochastic SGD to to solve a sub problem then this top gradient operation is a is a nat is a natural consequence and then we solve for eta so the sub problem can be solved independently for each eta and this SimCM algorithm in this paper can be approximated by one step alternation between between the both so first we approximate it by sampling the augmentation only once and then inserting it into sub problem 7 now now theta is is a constant in this pro sub problem and tau implies another view to its to random nature this formulation exhibits the CMEZI architecture. So if we implement this by, by reducing the loss with one SGD step, then, then we can approach the SimCM algorithm. A CMEZI network naturally with sub, stop gradient applied. So above analysis does not involve the predictor edge we further assume that edge is helpful in our method because of the approximation and in our hypothesis does not involve symmetrization and symmetrization is like denser sampling actually SDGD stop gradient optimizer computes the empirical expectation by sampling a batch of images and one pair of augmentation and we can have expectation over augmentations and we do not update ether sub x directly by by that assignment but instead we we maintain a moving average where m here is just a momentum coefficient typically 0.8 and i've seen in github it was 0.95 in I think it was in BYO implementation in PyTorch. This computation is similar to maintaining the memory bank, and this moving average provides an approximated expectation of multiple views. You see, compare the accuracy of SimCLR with SimCM, so it's just a small improvement.